Let us begin our holy mass in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you all. We have gathered in faith and in hope and we offer this mass believing that a lot of spiritual benefits will come from here. As you have come here in faith and hope, may all you ask that is good be granted unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for the progress of your parish. May you continue to grow in faith and may the gospel continue to expand. To prepare ourselves, therefore, for this holy mass, let us acknowledge our failings, our weaknesses, and the sins we commit, and ask Jesus to forgive us. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. The Lord is close to all who call him. The Lord is close to all who call him. No.
from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If it is to be life in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet, which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyards. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyards. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too. And whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the householder, saying, This last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, 
who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am not doing you, I am doing you no wrong. You did, did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So, the last will be first. And the first, last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Fellow laborers in the Lord's Vineyard, we are all laborers, the priests, the religious, and you, all of us, are laborers in the Lord's Vineyard, and everyone is expected to work hard so that at the end of the day, we, re we receive a just reward. And whatever God gives us, we take it. The important thing is to work hard. Use your time well. Apply your talent well. Work in unity and love with your brothers and sisters. And I can assure you, whether you are first or last, as long as you do all this, you will receive a just reward from the Lord. May it be so for each and every one of us. The readings today focus on the limitless and undiscriminating generosity of God. God is so generous. In bestowing favors, God does not see as man sees. The logic of God is different from human logic. We humans see the external, external, but God probes into the depth. God's wisdom surpasses our human categories of value and judgment, and so we cannot try to feed God into our category or make his plans and purposes conform to our own. Even as we gather here, all of us, I believe, are yearning for the gift of eternal life. And we know that the gift of eternal life is, is a gift of God. It is a sheer gift of God's generosity. You cannot earn it just like you earn a salary after working hard. God gives eternal life. It cannot be earned by purely human effort. In the early church, there was this heresy called Pelagianism. Pelagianism. 
This heresy taught that one could earn grace by our own efforts. One could earn blessings and graces by our own efforts rather than God's generosity. This heresy of Pelagianism believed that humans have the free will to achieve perfection without divine grace. And we know that that is not true. And that is why this belief, Pelagianism, is called a heresy. Wrong teaching. We depend on God. His grace is sufficient for us. Your human effort, all the effort you make is good. But God must crown it with his grace, with his blessing, with his favor. On your own, you can do very, very little. But with the grace of God, you can do even the impossible. That God's ways are not our way is demonstrated in the parable Jesus told his disciples today concerning the laborers and the land owner. While the owner of the vineyard hired laborers at dawn to work in his vineyard for the usual daily pay, he still goes out at different times to hire more laborers to go into his vineyard and work. Some remember started early in the morning and the last one he got came very late, almost one hour to closing time. But the owner of the land decided to pay them equally. He gave them equal payment. And this naturally disturbed those who were hired earlier. They grumbled, they complained, they were baffled. Uh -uh. We came early in the morning and started work. And we worked so hard. These people just came one hour or so to the closing time. And now we are receiving the same salary. So they were naturally very unhappy. They felt that there was injustice and unfairness. And so they grumbled at the generosity of the life of the landowner. Many of us think that blessings should be given to us on the basis of work done. And therefore, we grumble at God sometimes for the way he seems to bestow his blessings on those who have. Whether it is material blessing or whatever, sometimes it, it appears that those who have seem to get more. And those who don't have, like in terms of material blessings, even the little they have is exploited by those who have. If you are not careful, careful, it is taken away by those who have. And you wonder, is there justice? And why does God allow this? I don't know why God allows that. But all I know is that God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. When you know that, then you will be comforted. Whatever happens, God knows, and he knows better than you and I. Sometimes we may feel we have done so much for the church, and God, we feel we have done so much, I have devoted my time, I belong to different societies, I have given so much money at harvest, I have given so much tithe and so on, and you feel that automatically you deserve to be rewarded by God, or at least recognized by God. 
God may even choose to ignore you. If you are not strong in faith, you will give up and say, Oh, look at after all I am doing, God does not seem to look in my way. My brother and sister, we are told God's ways are not our way. When he does that, you don't know why he is doing it. And you can be sure that it is for your good. Do not draw back and say, look, since 1995, I have been here. We built this church. We carried the cement. We did this. We trained seminarians and khakis. I have been involved in all this. And yet, here I am. There is seemingly nothing I can show for it. Don't reason that way. God knows better than you. He knows why things are that way. I am rather going to advise you to focus on the gracious benefits that have come to God to you. I will say to you, don't become jealous about other people. Oh, God gave this person this, God gave this person that, and I, that I am always in the church praying, I am saying my rosary every day, I do divine mercy, I belong to Legion of Mary, Sacred Heart, and look at where I am. Don't think that way. Don't give up. Perhaps it is at that point of your giving up that God will manifest his blessing. So, I am saying, don't give up and don't be jealous about others, no matter what they have. Just be happy that you are alive. Be happy that God has given you something, no matter how small. Be contented and be ready to serve God with all your heart and with all your mind. And always remain, remain thankful. Remain thankful rather than worrying about what other people have got. Remain thankful. Even with your family, don't compare and say, that family is better. How are you sure they are better? You are only seeing the appearance. God sees the inside. You may think you are not rich, you don't have this, you don't have that. That family has this. They have houses, they have cars, they have this, and they are happy. I tell you, you don't know. In God's judgment, you may even be a happier person. But from the outside, you say, look, I'm suffering and all that. We are not saying people should suffer. We are saying that just take what comes to you with gratitude, big or small. And we pray that big things will come to you. We pray, in, if they come big, you thank God. If they come small, you thank God. That is the lesson here. The parable also teaches us about the importance of work. Note that in the parable, the owner of the vineyard is concerned about people standing idle without work. And so he goes out, the owner of the land goes out five times, inviting people to come and work in his vineyard. This is to show that God wants you and I to work. God created and equipped people for work. If you read Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, you will know that. In his encyclical on human work, St. John Paul II says, I quote, Work is fundamental, work is a fundamental dimension of man's existence on earth. Work gives meaning and fulfillment to our lives and enhances our human dignity." Unquote. In life, there is no room for idleness. We must seek to be fruitful and productive. St. Paul, addressing the Thessalonians, warns, he warns them to stay away from everyone who is living in idleness reminding them of his toil and labor night and day as we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 8 to 12. We are called to not only work to earn our daily bread 
We are also called to walk in the kingdom of God according to our calling and situation. All of us are called to walk in the kingdom of God. Don't say it is for the bishop, the priest, the religious, the catechist. All of us baptized. We are called to walk in the kingdom of God. And I'm happy to see that this is the case. Everyone here has something to offer for the progress of the faith. The people playing the organ or whatever it is called, they are doing their own part. The people singing there with the microphones in front of them, they are doing their own part. I see some women here. Are you Chris CWO or who? The women in front here. Are you CWO? They are playing their own part. Behind the choir, I see another group of women. Who are you? Are you? Oh, Zumunta Mata. Zumunta Mata. Yaya Kuki. Yaya Harkoki. Yaya Zumunchi. Very good. So they are playing their own part. And I'm sure there are some young people here, and children even. Everybody is called to play his or her own part. Nobody should sit on the fence. Nobody should remain indifferent. You must contribute something. God has given you something. You may say, what do I have? You have a lot. You have a lot God has given you. So don't count yourself out. Don't be neither cold nor hot. Do something for your faith. Do something for your church. Do something so that at the end of life, God will have mercy on you and grant you the gift of eternal life. Today, the sad reality is that many of our young people are qualified and ready to walk but they have no work. If I should take the statistics in this church and say those young people who are here who have no work, you will find out that there are many. Are there many people here who are not employed? Are there many of you? Many. So you see, many young people, yes, we are told in the reading that work God wants us to walk, that nobody should be idle. The person who is idle is a problem. Because when we walk, there is dignity. Our educated young people are willing to contribute their quota to our collective growth and development in the country but they remain unemployed, many of them. It is an understatement to say that idleness breeds social vices and makes youth susceptible to socio-political manipulation and crime. When people are idle, what do you expect? Violence, conflict, crime, all will flourish. Secret court, kidnapping, robbery and everything if they don't find meaning in life, if they cannot find work that bestows on them dignity, then they resort to this antisocial behavior. So work is a right. God commanded it, and all governments must ensure that their young people are usefully and gainfully engaged. The pension, the pension for greed and corruption of many individuals entrusted with public offices weaken the political will to address the economic empowerment of our young people. There is so much blessing God has given us, but those who operate and control the blessings, the material blessings especially for the common good, there is a problem there, the management of it. And that is why 
there is unemployment and the youth continue to suffer and when they suffer they engage in criminal activity and we blame them provide good jobs accompany these young people from secondary school they finish they go to university they finish they go to youth service a wonderful scheme that if we had used so well would liberate our young people but look when you see some uh, youth service uh, uh, people when they go they have nowhere to stay no direction they don't even find a place to absorb them and so on not to talk of what we eat or wh where to stay we must take care of our young people even those who are lucky to have government jobs complain that they lack incentives and proper motivation and so they are sometimes indifferent to their work because they hardly get what we call job satisfaction or job fulfillment you don't get it after 30 years or 35 years of faithful service to the nation our pensioners those who should be receiving pension that is a sign of gratitude of the nation to them but these pensioners suffer long periods of waiting and their entitlements are not given sometimes they die in the process of waiting even where they succeed in getting the little that is due to them it is alleged that they are extorted before you get your pension the person who moves your file from one table to the other demands something from you these are remember poor people who have used their whole life energy working for the nation now it's time for them to be settled so that they can be comfortable but those in those offices will like you how much do i get or if you don't give your file is lost and that is how it goes to the highest level something is wrong groups like the university lecturers and nigerian resident doctors always have to resort to strike action over unpaid allowances and salaries no wonder our great brain in various professions migrate to other parts of the world where socio-economic conditions are better what are we saying what are we begging that our government should give top priority to the provision of job opportunities and the payment of respectable and just wages for too long we have focused on the oil revenue the oil may someday dry up or someday we may not need oil to drive our cars and do many things what will we do as a nation government must explore agricultural and mineral and other economic possibilities to provide more jobs for our teeming young people the government must also create an enabling environment for the private sector which is also an important employer of labor so that these private sectors can thrive if they are doing well they will support government by absorbing the many young people that are roaming the streets and we are hoping too that the government will look closely at those areas which have been destabilized because of violence or conflict and they will provide the necessary security so that farming and other economic activities can resume without tears. The recent hike in electricity tariffs and petrol price compound problems. The corona pandemic crisis is there coupled with the negative impact of activities of insurgents and bandits we are still suffering from the effects of these and now with the price hike in fuel and 
electricity, then the problem becomes compounded. We should not give up. We should not give up. Let us continue to seek the Lord as the first reading tells us. Not only now, but at all times. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6. Let us continue to seek the Lord because the Lord is our refuge, our shield, our protector, and our hope. Please, let us continue to pray. And in a special way, pray for Nigeria and her leaders. The, the country needs prayer. Our leaders need prayer. When they are struggling during elections to win at all costs, they should know the implications of being elected. Right now, if there is a vacancy for governorship and then people have to contest, come and see the ferocity, the hostility, the unhealthy competition and you wonder what are they competing for is it to serve the people or to serve themselves most times it is about serving self most times it is for selfish interest if not so if you are a true leader and you want to serve the people you will suffer if you are a true leader and you have the interest of the people as number one you will not sleep you will not eat you will not be comfortable until the people are comfortable. You will even be running away when they ask you to come and occupy this position, either as local government chairman or governor or minister or senator or whatever. But if leadership is about grabbing, amassing and enjoying myself, my family, my region, my tribe, my religious people and all that, then something is wrong with our understanding and definition of leadership. That is why I say we should continue to pray for our country so that our leaders will come to this conscious awareness that our people in the rural areas, our people who are so socially deprived should be their number one consideration as they struggle for political power and as they win elections and remain in power, they should not forget these local, humble, and socially deprived people. I thank you, my dear parish priest, for the Boniface Ngene and your assistant, Reverend Father George and Reverend Father Felix. And I thank you, pre parishioners, for the very well, warm welcome today. Like St. Paul told the Christians in Philippi that their ways were to be modeled after the footsteps of Christ. I urge you today to always live for Christ and for the good of one another. And cling, cling unto Christ. I say cling unto Christ and not to anybody else. Cling unto Christ until the very end. Don't do it halfway. Don't do and stop. Cling on to Christ until the very end. And as St. Paul says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 27 today, avoid anything in your everyday life that would be unworthy of the gospel of Christ. May the Lord bless you now and all the days of your life. Amen.
Let us all stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of my Holy maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, born of Jesus. God and God, life and life, through God and through God, the God and not only, who from sunshine is the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon his fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son and the Lord and the Lord of life, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, public and apostolic church, and confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's ways are not our ways because His justice and generosity exceeds our standards. We come to Him in prayer knowing that He listens and that He will act. For our vigil and all the pastors who serve God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those nations where justice and freedom are denied to working people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For workers associated to maintain their rights and a just wage, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who promote the humane care of animals, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May we add our private attention. We pray with our mother Mary as we say, Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is Blessed the Lord, and blessed the fruit of your womb, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for all sinners, now and hour of our death. Amen. Loving Father, you are near to all who call on you. Welcome our prayers with your generous care, and show us once more your abundant compassion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be there through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord and profess your resurrection until we come to Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Ignatius, our Bishop, and Slemis of Villary and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, as far as with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in heaven, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, the beggar of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only save the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen.
exactly came 104.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that they may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Ya 
Yabe, Yabe, Ube, Yabe, Yabe, Ube, 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 Hallelujah! 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 Your Grace, Most Reverend Ignatius Ayao Kama, it's a great privilege to have you in our midst, and we thank God for this day. May the name of the Lord be blessed, both now and forevermore. Yeah. I actually was trying to manage information, not to tell the entire parishioners that we're going to have this mass at 10 o'clock celebrated by you but because the I mean considering the pandemic I wanted to avoid a crowd but the ways of man is this from the thoughts of man and the ways of man are different from the thoughts and ways of God so God brought down the rain this morning so that whether I wanted it or not a good number eventually would be at this man. And let his will be done. And we hope that everyone who has come will really go with plenty of lessons from heaven and also from the Archbishop. Congratulations to all of us. May the Lord continue to bless the Archbishop. So today, we will have the blessing of the Grotto at the end of the final blessing. Not every one of us will be able to join. Members of the Parish Council, the Building Committee, Choir, 
some representatives of the parish will be there. Others will have to watch from a distance so that we keep the right distance. We hope that at the end of it, we will eventually continue to pray there and our Lady and Dua of North will continue to intercede for us. We thank everyone who has made today a beautiful one and I invite the Vice Chairman TBC to say a few words to his grace on behalf of all of us. Thank you. Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Are we happy today? Yes, we are supposed to be very happy because this is the first time His Grace, the Archbishop of Abuja Archdiocese, is visiting us. In fact, when I was thinking, I said, okay, I hope somebody is going to bring him because I'm sure he has not come to uh, this part of Abuja before. His grace, you are most welcome. And you can see, yes. Yes, this is, before I move on to the address, as the parish priest has already said, after the mass, uh, His grace will move to the grotto to bless the grotto for us. After that, we converge at the front of the church where uh, groups or individuals who have gifts we give the gift so that we observe the COVID-19 distances. And after that, His Grace will retire to the parish uh, house, maybe for a cup of tea, uh, and also have some tete a tete with the priests and uh, the religious, and maybe a few others. Now on the address. A welcome address presented by St. Donald Catholic Church, FHA Karo, Abuja, to the Catholic Archbishop of the Catholic Diocese of Abuja, His Grace, Most Reverend Ignatius Kaigama, on the occasion of his first visit to, to St. Donald's Catholic Church, FEJ Karo Abuja, His Grace, the Catholic Archbishop of Abuja, Most Reverend Ignatius Kaigama, the parish priest, Reverend Father Boniface Ingene. All the Reverend Fathers here present, our associate priests, Reverend Fathers James George and Felix Ilemona. All the, um, our Reverend Sisters, distinguished guests, the parish pastoral council, fellow parishioners, ladies and gentlemen, your grace, the parish priests, the associate priests, the Parish Pastoral Council, and the entire parishioners of St. Donald Catholic Church, FHA Carol, sincerely welcome you. Welcome your grace to this parish on this occasion of your first visit to this parish as the Catholic Archbishop of the Catholic Archdiocese of Abuja. You are most welcome to St. Donald Catholic Church, Karo, Abuja. We also welcome other priests the religious and friends who have come to rejoice with us on this occasion. You are all welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you immensely for finding time to come and see us and know where we are. Your Grace, we sincerely and happily congratulate you on your recent investiture with the value by His Holiness. Pope Francis, and also on your successful convocation of the first General Assembly of the Abuja Archdiocese and the creation of 13 new pastoral areas in Abuja Archdiocese. We promise to be united and to work with you towards 
your noble goals for the adults of Abuja. We will not bog you down by the litany of our needs in this parish. But as the grace can see, our church is still under construction. But at the finishing stage, courtesy of, of our general parishioners and benefactors from outside, from outside the parish, who have continuously put in their hard-earned money to ensure to ensure the completion uh, of this church and the building of our only grotto, notwithstanding the harsh economic conditions. We are grateful to all of you and pray that the Almighty God will bless them abundantly and take care of their needs always through Christ our Lord. We also thank the building committee for their shrewd and painstaking efforts in supervising and guiding the construction of this church to the point where we are today. May the Almighty God bless all of you abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. Your grace, we also thank you as you bless and commission our new and holy grotto in this parish, which is the grotto of Our Lady, the Undua of North. And may the grace of the Almighty God continue to abide in you as you shepherd the good people of Abuja Archdown. I will not conclude my address without appreciating the priests that you have sent to us that are shepherding us here in St. Donald's Parish. We appreciate them because they have been dedicated in taking care of our pastoral needs and have always supported us, both individually and collectively, and we love them. May the Almighty God continue to endow them with grace they need to continue the care for His flock through Christ our Lord. We recently, uh, we are recently informed that by the instrument of the hand of uh, your grace, one of our priests uh, is going to leave us to another parish. We thank you for the time that he was with us. We love him dearly and we appreciate his stay in this parish. We hope that a replacement will soon come and will not be less than what we have. We are used to high standard. You have been sending priests of very high standard to this parish. And we thank your grace for that. Your grace, we thank you once more for your visit. Have a peaceful and enjoyable visit. And may the good Lord continue to protect you, guide you, and strengthen you so as to lead us to the salvation we are all working for through Christ our Lord. Thank you. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Please, the owner of this car, ABJ 102 KC, is a fourth car. Please go out and wind up. As we announced last Sunday today, our own collection is in support of the Vincent Depot of our parish for the good work that they are doing. Please, we should be generous to support the Vincent Depot of our parish. Everlasting Father, everlasting Son, Immortal Holy Ghost, be Thou glorified. Everlasting Father, everlasting Son, Immortal Holy Ghost, be Thou glorified.
Our parish choir has a special presentation for our Archbishop. Thank you, Fire, for the prayer. 
I didn't get all the words, but I know you were telling God to do something good for me. So, we have come to the end of our mass, and as usual, I'm so happy that we have been able to pray together. Despite the difficult times and the situation, our faith has not slackened. We always come to rejoice in the Lord. And that was what St. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord all the time. And I'm happy to see that mood so if you feel that you truly are united and rejoice in, in the Lord. So to you all I say well done and thank you for keeping the work of God going. This work is not for one person or one group. This work is for all of us. Wherever you come from, from this part of Nigeria, from any part of Nigeria, know that your mission is here in St. Donald, Karo. This is where God has planted you. This is where you will grow and this is where you will bloom. Anything you can do for the church, do it here. Do it now and don't delay. I'm happy to hear Father Boniface telling me that we shall be blessing a grotto, a grotto after mass. And he told me that one person was the donor of this project. And this is the way it is. One person gives this, another person gives that. This church was all built collectively, individually, collectively. You were giving and giving. And that is why God is blessing your parish and is also blessing you. So I want, even though the person doesn't want to be mentioned, the person who donated the, the grotto, I know you are sitting here and I know your name. I even know your face, but I won't call your name. Yes, this is what we call anonymous donation. And we can do it. Just give what your spirit tells you, you can give. And God will not abandon you and will not let you go without his blessing. So on behalf of the whole church and myself, we say thank you to this anonymous donor. And I pray that we shall get more anonymous donors. Even if you don't want to be anonymous, if you have something good for the church, come to the parish priest or any of the priests and identify yourself. We would even like to acknowledge your name, acknowledge what you have done publicly so that it will encourage others to do like you are doing. So once again, I'm so happy to have celebrated with you in St. Donald, my dear brother priest here, the religious and all of you. It's been wonderful. May God continue to renew his blessings in you. And may you continue to make more and more progress in the faith and in your work. All this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can you stand and receive the final blessing. Now you bow your head and pray for God's blessings. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go home in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And I hope you realize those people with the camera here, you know where they come from? Where are they from? Catholic television. And I hope you have the decoder in your houses. Because the mass we have celebrated, other people are looking at it and watching it. So you too should be able to have the decoder so that you can watch the programs of other parishes. That is what will make us stronger. So I advise that if you don't have a decoder yet, try and get one so that you are connected to the archdiocese. 
Thank you, Catholic Television. Thank you, cameraman. May God continue to bless the work that you do. Go in God's peace.